ripped. I don't like. Why would you do this? They glued it. Why, man? Wow, man. This is super messed up. Oh my god. Hey everyone, today we're taking apart the new NVIDIA RTX 2060, and this is the reference card, the Founders Edition card, as they call it. It's still a dual fan design, but it's been shrunken a bit, so it's it's a baby version. Just a little tiny baby RTX card. The size difference is about 22 and a half, 23 centimeters on the 2060 versus almost 27 centimeters on the 2080 Ti. But we need to see what's inside of it. And it should be a bit interesting because the PCB does not come all the way to the end of the card, and yet the power connector is at the end of the card. And this is something we saw with the 1060 as well, and is something that on the 1060 required really interesting and sort of annoying to work with cable routing, where they they run some cables along uh, the top of the shroud and then solder them to the board. So we're going to look at that and see how they routed the cable, what kind of PCB and VRM it has, all that stuff. Today, we'll have a separate video for the review. If you haven't already seen that, it'll be on the channel. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly and their high-end thermal compounds. Thermal Grizzly makes cryonaut paste for high thermal performance and conductivity without being electrically conductive, so you don't have to worry about shorting components. Cryonaut is particularly good for replacing stock GPU pastes, as cryonaut is a non-curing compound. Learn more at the link in the description below. Specs and performance will be in the review as always, and overall, it's, uh, well, it's the same cooler. So thermally, you can check our review for how it did. But NVIDIA actually gave us, to their credit, a lot of lead time this time with the RTX 2060, which is really appreciated because a lot of video card launches, we typically have as little as one to as much as maybe six days to review the product. Having a couple of weeks, like 10 to 14 days, is huge to being able to produce better content. And that means that at the point of filming this, we actually, I'm not even sure when the embargo lifts. That's how far out it is. So uh, we'll, we'll leave the rest of the discussion to the review. But externally, it still has the, uh, the small screws that we typically find on these NVIDIA reference boards. And on the back side of the cooler, it's got the four largest screws that are probably spring tensioned for the cooler. It's got still the same six screws for the expansion PCIe slot. And the new one is on this side, on the, uh, the power connector side of the board, it's got three larger screws. And then the base plate and cooler, the heat sink, do look a bit different. So let's take it apart and see what it looks like underneath, get a good look at the PCB and VRM while we're at it. Just to illustrate the size difference, the text barely even fits on the 2060, whereas on the 2080 and the TI, you can see... Th oh. Something's gonna snap. Man, there's a lot of glue. Well, this, as you saw in the flashback, was a huge pain to remove, and we're not gonna, probably not gonna try and remove that on the 2060 today, but um, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So first thing, we recommend generally is taking out the small screws and working around to the larger ones. These are typically a, uh, I think it's a Phillips zero size. So on the original design, there were 14 of these small screws. And uh, we've taken it off of them apart at this point where it takes about five minutes to take it apart if you're really kind of trying to do it fast, but it is a, a slow process the first few times. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven of the small screws. So they've gotten rid of three. Proud of you, NVIDIA. Gotten rid of three screws. Um, on the original, if you missed the original coverage, it is sort of entertaining. We did have a two-part series taking apart the, uh, the shroud assembly was actually pretty confusing. It was tricky the way they did it. They, uh, NVIDIA, so, I mean, it looks like you just kind of take these four screws out, but as we showed in our piece, what ends up happening is you, you take the, the heat sink fan off with the shroud, and then you have the PCB. So if you want to do water cooling mods, that's pretty easy. If you want to take this apart, like for service, maintenance, replace a fan, anything like that, it was a huge pain. And the way to do it was to take a heat gun, blast it at this front nameplate, which has on the 2080s and 2070 glue underneath it, and then uh, pop a screwdriver up in there and pry it off, which, um, well, I mean, there's a reason that it looks like that now. It's really not worth adding it back. So not sure, I guess really the point is NVIDIA used an absurd amount of screws uh, to the point where it was just, I mean, it was, it was almost 
literally one screw per RTX op, of which there were like 76 or something on the on that series card. So whether they do that again, we'll see. It's it's not like they had a ton of time to change the designs. It's not like they particularly care what we think, but it did seem uh, over-engineered and not necessarily in a way that was beneficial to anything. Okay, so the plate's pretty much free. And we've got two pan head screws here. So here's the back plate on Veil, and that's it. There are two thermal pads. They look like Fuji poly pads. We have, again, the small, I think these are four millimeter screws, but this time there are fewer of them. There are three fewer, just like there are three fewer of the small ones. Small ones socket into these. We need to take those out. Those are four millimeter hex head, and then, okay, so those are not four. Do they change the size, or am I misremembering? Those are 3.5. Wow, that's messed up. <laughs> Why'd they do that? Okay, so, if, well, first of all, let's look at the back plates. Uh, 2080, 2070, 2080 Ti, you've got the um, bit more effort put into thermal pads on the back side. Is it relevant? Well, we'll see in thermal and power testing, which will be more in the review, not here. But you can see the back side of a uh, capacitor bank, inductor line right there. MOSFETs are going to be opposite of these caps, probably. The point is, none of that is synced into the back plate. Um, instead, we have the coating on it, which is to prevent any any uh, direct shorts. But anyway, that might not be too relevant. What is just sort of annoying, though, is that NVIDIA has changed the size for whatever reason to 3.5 millimeters. I don't like, why would you do this? I don't know. They're already, they're already buying a million of these screws. You might as well just keep using those. So those are 3.5 and these are four. Four. It's not really a big deal, just sort of odd and it's, it's NVIDIA. It's, it's a very NVIDIA thing to do, to change the, uh, the screw size on their already odd screw selection. But whatever, we'll deal with it. Back to this one. So there are, I th think I said 11 of these. They're a pretty good fit though, I'll give them that. And they use uh, the red Loctite on them. God damn it, it's gonna keep happening. These are like really in there every time. Maybe that's why they changed it, make it a more exact fit. All right, so a couple more of these. And while I've been working, I've been tracking the screws just on the, the mod mat. So if uh, you haven't already picked one up, you can buy one of these mod mat build services I'm working on on store.gamersnexus.net. It has a grid screw tracker for video cards just like this one, and then a, a wiring diagram for PCIe pinouts over here that uh, we can use later when we're checking the shunt resistor paths. So we'll be checking against 12 volt on the shunt resistor legs to see which one corresponds to which, uh, which header. All right, next thing we're gonna do is there are, oh, this has got DVI, I haven't seen that in a while on an NVIDIA card, so uh, three of those, larger screws, pH, um, is that zero? That's one, Phillips one, and then three Phillips zero, and then a four millimeter hex head, it looks like four. I think that is four this time, which is also why it's kind of annoying that NVIDIA made that change, because it's gonna be separate sizes. That might be five, though, we'll see. Five millimeter hex head. It begins to separate for sure. I'm thinking it's going to be stuck. Uh, yeah. I see the wire. Oh, that's pretty annoying, actually. OK, we're going to be careful <laughs> with this one. So the shroud's going to separate from the cooler if I remove these two screws, which seems like it will make it easier to remove the PCB without damaging anything, just because of the, the way the cables are soldered into that PCIe header, or into the board from the PCIe header. Yes. Well, that's nice. That's easier than previously. I've got this cable that I'm stuck to, though. <laughs> that's going to be on the right side of the board. So it's the best way to get this out. 
those wires right there, those fat ones, are the ones going to this PCIe header. And then that ribbon, well, not really ribbon cable, but that set of wires there, that goes to the RGB LEDs in the fan. Oh, theoretically RGB LEDs that are deactivated anyway. So I can get that disconnected. I've gotten it out on that side, but these are um, these are more problematic. So, because from what I can see, they appear to be soldered, not connected, which leaves me questioning how I'm going to reconnect that fan later. Other than a lot of patience, I guess. Wow, man, this is super messed up. That's gonna be really fun to reconnect later. What do I do? I think if I separate, oh, there we go. Okay, cool. <laughs> that took a while to figure out, but it didn't really achieve a whole lot for us, unfortunately. I was gonna say, I think if I separate the heat sink from the base plate, then this will be easier. And I don't know if that's accurate, but my plan at this point is to try and get this cable. I'm going to try and show the camera. Try and get this cable for the fans out. Because um, if I can get that out, then I can get the rest of the board out without damaging the power connectors. So I really, really did a good job of closing this one up and making sure you can't really get in there. Um, okay, so. There's the fan cable. I'm going to try and walk you through everything. Fan cable there. This does not disconnect on the fan side. It's all soldered. So I've disconnected it from the PCB, which you can kind of see there. That, that's the wiring right there. That connector is not in a socket right now. I took it apart. So it's loose, but the biggest concern is that I need to fish that fan cable out somehow. Now that the... Uh, the base plate has been separated from the card. Why, man? All of this just to get the friggin' cable off to the side so that they, they like, this seems like a Jensen decision. Like they didn't want the power header here because it would be in the middle of the card and would be ugly, I guess. And they can't make the shroud shorter because then both fans won't fit, I think is my understanding. Yes, that is true. Both fans wouldn't fit if they took this chunk off. So the power leads are right there. You can you could solder something straight to it, but they opted not to. I think I think if I get those screws out, then I can free the cable. Shout out to the viewer who sent us this. Hopefully, it gets some use today. There's two. There are three of these in there. So there's a plate in there. It's not really super visible on camera. I don't know how to make it more visible, but it's over the over the fan cable. So I just took the screws out for that. And the goal is to route the cable through. You've got to be careful that PCB. There's hair on that screwdriver. Nice. Well, there's the stupid plate. Okay, now we can get the cable free. They glued it. NVIDIA, did you not see the Walmart video? There's a blob of hot glue in there. What the f So not only is this cable obnoxiously routed through here to a point where like, you can't even disconnect it without taking literally everything apart. It also has a plastic cover with no meaningful labels on it. Plastic cover that sits here to help with cable management, I guess, uh, and also make it impossible to take apart. So you have to take this out, which in my instance, because I don't want to like rip the soldered in connectors out of the board, which you can now see clearly right there, I was using a uh, right angle ratcheting driver, which couldn't ratchet because there's not enough, you know, there's not enough uh, resistance on it. So then you're doing one turn that way and you grip, ratchet, and then quarter turn, grip, quarter turn. So that takes forever on three screws. And then <laughs> there's a fourth screw in there. Um, only one of them was accessible externally and uh, like without doing that process. And then they glued in 
half of the cable. Just this top half. Actually, is it all of it? It might be all of it. Some of it's kind of dried. Oh my God. And they glued it to this metal right angled uh, like plate in there. See that plate in there? It's glued where the green one is. <sighs> Why? Why, NVIDIA? Why do you hate specifically me? <laughs> That's what this comes down to. Someone at NVIDIA is like, Steve's going to take this apart on camera, and I, <laughs> I want to watch. Uh, I want to see if I can, I can uh, stop it before he gets too far. <laughs> see if I can stop him from revealing the die. Uh, okay, so now what? I guess I separate, hmm, that does not separate. There's like a screw there too, what the hell does that do? That must hold down this thing. So if I take that out, maybe the header comes free. I bet that's what happens next. I think that's the next step, oh my God. Right, that comes off. And then this is now free. Uh, all right. Okay, so uh, that was annoying. Fuji poly pads. We have lots of these, so I can replace the torn ones. One, two, three, four, five, six memory modules. Samsung memory on ours. Let's see. There's memory up. This is memory. You kind of draw a box around this. There's your memory VRM. This is your V core VRM. And one, two, three, four, five, six, if we're counting inductors, are there any doublers in use? Nope, no doublers. Following the rest of the 20 series, getting rid of doublers. GPU is TU106-200A-KA-A1. So A1, as always, is just a revision number. Uh, TU-106 is the GPU, dash 200A is the, the sort of um, subclass of the GPU if there is one. There might be another TU-106 dash 300A, for example. A after the 200 is a demarcation of a higher bin, so it'll overclock a bit higher. It's a bit more expensive as opposed to the partners who have to buy the, the A bin GPUs for more money. Uh, or they can buy the non-A ones for like the sort of on the um, the 2070. That would be your the, your cheapest model. I, what was it? 500 bucks for the cheapest model or something. Those are all non-A. Die size. Let's get a rough measurement. So external measurement: 24.44 wide, 18.81 tall. I don't know that there's really much else to look at other than maybe the shunt resistor assignment. It should just there's two of them. So there's one here. And then there is one shunt resistor there. And one of these will go to PCIe and one will go to the PCIe power cable. So I'm guessing this go probably goes there. That's continuous. So if you look at the uh, multimeter, you'll see 0 0.1 for the resistance ohms. And when it changes, that's just me slipping off of it. So 0 0.1, that says that this backside shunt is connected to the 12 volt uh, PCIe cable. And if you wanted to do a shunt mod for some reason on this card, that would be where you would do it. Think that covers it. Think that <laughs> that covers the PCB. Guess we didn't really look at this yet because it's all glued together. Um, let's, let's try and do that. So, well, we can see the bottom. So um, what's happening here, we've got a big copper block here. It's a bit thick, that's not necessarily a good thing, but it's just for clearance reasons. It's so that they can get it down low enough to hit the GPU. But um, you generally want a, a, you want more surface area, not more density. So anyway, the copper cold plate there contacts, and then that is connected with two heat pipes here. So it is a heat pipe cooler. There's another heat pipe hidden in this area here. You can see the end of it there. So heat pipe there. And that, if we actually look really closely, I'm not sure how well the camera will see this, but you can see where it's routed um, based on just an impression on the bottom side here. So 
you can kind of see the outline of the heat pipe underneath this plate going like this into the cold plate. And actually I can, if, I don't know, if I look kind of down that slot, I can see the copper turning. So yeah, it goes like this. And then uh, some foam for damping, the blue um, thermal putty that they've used previously is back again. And that is connecting the base plate to the heat sink. It's uh, connecting it to this, um, this sort of rougher surface, which I don't know if that's an aluminum or a steel or what. I think that's aluminum. Pretty sure that's aluminum. So a uh, base plate connects to what we think is probably an aluminum uh, base plate to the cooler. And then on the underside, you have the thermal pads, some of which we'll be replacing with new ones of the same model. I have all the all of these same exact models here. So thermal pads connect to the PCB, goes through the base plate. Base plate has kind of the EVGA approach to um, EVGA's uh, on-plate fin stacks that they did with ICX, and that's present here as well. So a bit of extra surface area there. It's over the memory and over, this is the bottom of the card. So this is kind of near the cho the inductors and the bottom MOSFET that's near the top of the uh, induct. That's, yeah, near the, uh, it's a bit off to the side. And then, Glued in power cable, and I or for the fans, so I think that covers. I think that's that's everything. This is not a vapor chamber. Uh, so this is an aluminum fin stack heat sink with heat pipes, cold plate, and then air goes through it to cool it, and that's your cooling solution. Okay, so I don't even know what I think of the video card's performance as we film this now. It's in the review. The, uh, all the testing is done. I haven't looked at the data. I haven't written the script at this point today. Keep in mind, we film stuff in advance of embargo lift. So I don't. I can't tell you. The the me in this video can't tell you what I think of the video card. But the review that's probably already up, you can see what I think of it uh, as far as performance, power consumption, cost, all that stuff. What we'll talk about here is the only thing I, I presently have thoughts on besides the the fact that we have test data I haven't really looked at yet. Um, the video card, the assembly is completely insane. I don't know what, like why NVIDIA insists on doing this to themselves and everyone else. This is not, this isn't cheap to do. Like this is an expensive way to build a video card. Uh, there are pretty good coolers on the market for video cards that the, we know the cost of. And some of the video card partners, the AIB partners, you know, uh, and probably buy their, their cards. They spend anywhere from $20 to $50 on a cooler, 50 being like the really expensive sort of high-end top class cards, and 20, and we're talking 2080, 2080 Ti class here, $20 being like the 2070 cheapest coolers. And some of the 2070 cheapest coolers are perfectly fine, and they would certainly be perfectly fine for this. But I don't know what NVIDIA's cost is to build this thing, but it is crazy what they're doing, because I mean, that's the, the glue residue right there from the cable, I guess, like if you look at it, so let's do kind of benefit of the doubt, uh, Occam's razor thing here. Uh, not even that, it's just, it, it might not even be incompetence or malice. I think it's just probably like they thought this was the best way to do it because NVIDIA is not very experienced with building the actual cooler. And uh, NVIDIA has been getting into this new design with a dual fan, dual axial design. So they're new to it. And they're doing a lot of really weird things to try and like secure the cable. For example, glue a plastic plate and like six screws, I think, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws to hold down the, the cable. Um, just why? I, I, don't, I don't quite get it. Uh, the card might be totally fine. It might be good value. Like I said, check the other video. It's just it's it's really going to be difficult to maintain if you have to take it apart and it is pretty common to take a card apart to reapply thermal paste after maybe say three years because it starts hardening and you replace it and you get pretty significant performance gains thermal performance uh thermal reduction by replacing the paste every couple of years from the stock initial paste that cures so that's a, a real thing people do and they don't have to be like modding it or anything crazy you just replace the paste and it's not going to be easy with this card. Uh, replacing the fans won't be easy with this card. Um, 
in no way is this card an easily serviceable product. And uh, that's something that we don't particularly like because generally speaking, the ability to service a product either as a byproduct of the design because they the manufacturer went with fewer screws, therefore making it easier to take apart, or because the company is actually making it an active effort, making an active effort to make it easier to service the product, i.e. Motorola with their new phones. Uh, those are, that's, that's something we'd like to see because it's, I mean, if, if you're buying a new phone because you can't replace the battery in it, then that's a bad reason to buy a new phone. If you're buying a new video card because it's getting too hot because it's been in your system for three years and there's dust caked in the inside that you can't see, and you buy a new card instead of replacing the pads and the paste, that's a bad reason to buy a new video card. Unfortunately, with this card, uh, it is a, it's a bit of work. It's not the worst. It's not the biggest deal in the world to take it apart, but there is inherently a bit more risk taking it apart. These are pretty beefy soldered in there. Uh, they're, they're thick gauge cables, but it's still not that difficult to snap that connection if you didn't take the, the care we did today. Um, it's also just a lot of people aren't gonna see this video when they go through that process. And so they're gonna have to figure it out themselves, which again, not terribly difficult. Just, just why? <laughs> There's no reason for it to be this hard. So whatever, uh, I don't know what NVIDIA is doing. This, is, this design's completely crazy. It was just, it was crazy with this card too, I thought, but this is actually, I don't know if I want to say worse. Well, it's rough because with this one, like to take the entire cooler assembly apart, since it's the, the vapor chamber is soldered to the rest of it, um, it is a bit more difficult to get the cooler apart. But to get to the PCB on, on this is not that hard. It's uh, 14, 18, 20, 26 screws. You can get to the PCB and 26 screws on this without any weirdness going on. With this one, well, we'll take a shot of the grid I have here to show the amount of screws that were involved. It's not, I don't know, it's, it's more about like the difficulty of just finding them and taking them out without damaging the, uh, the fan connector or the power connector. So anyway, that's the 2060 reference teardown. You can go to store.cameraznexus.net if you want to buy a mod mat with the screw tracker because you might need it for one of these cards. Or, or you can go to patreon.com slash cameraznexus to help us out directly. Subscribe for more. Make sure you check our channel for the review and the other 2060 coverage. I'll see you all next time.